Hello. Just give me one minute so I can tell everyone I'm here. And then get on the chat. I'm going to be making some pajama pants. So I thought I would pop on here and and uh, make them with you guys. Hopefully everybody can see everything. Okay. All right, so say hi guys. Um, so today I'm going to be making pattern 4388. Um, I have posted photos of the, um, the pants I've made for my son on Instagram and uh, Facebook, but they're right there. So they're super easy. Um, there are different variations, but for this one, there is only one pattern piece and you cut the two pieces uh, mirrored and then it's, it's really quick. So I'm gonna be making some for the kids, the nieces and the nephews and all stuff like that. So I got some, some really fun hockey flannel fabric for the hockey players in my life. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start doing it. So you guys wanna chat, feel free. With this pattern, I have made it before with my son and um, it's a little wide, like it's a little baggy. It's kinda like hammer pants, you know? And so to, to remedy that situation, I'm actually pleating the center of the pattern so it doesn't affect the outer sides of it so just folded it over to kind of get rid of one inch of fabric and then I'm going to I'm going to pin it down and for some reason this pattern it is a little wide so when you do buy your your um your flannel fabric you're supposed to have it folded in half um it's kind of too wide for the folded in half fabric which I find interesting. So I haven't done much surging videos, so I won't be surprised if people drop off. <laughs> but this is one of those things that you can still make it with a regular sewing machine, which I have, and a zigzag stitch. And I might even extend the length of this a bit so I might even just make them a little longer when we get down there and then I just have a one inch long elastic I need to find my okay I'll use my my little rotary cutter because I don't know where my anyway so I'm just gonna cut so this is why rotary cutters can be really helpful when you're doing a project like this. Cutting with the scissors can get a little bit more complicated. But it is hard on the wrist. So if you are like me and you are affected by carpal tunnel, The rotary cutters can be pretty hard on your wrist. Okay. So I'm just going to extend it down like another inch just in case. Better longer than shorter, I think. Right. Oh, 
sorry if I'm blocking. But we'll just see how long it takes for me to make one of these patterns. It shouldn't take too long. The longest part, I think, is just cutting out the, the pattern. Oh, okay. Good morning from, oh, that's so funny. Someone says hello and then it gets reviewed. Cute little emojis. <laughs> hello, New York. Seems like everyone's it's maybe a little too early for some people. They're a little quiet. Okay. So now we have two pieces, which is just both legs. All right, I'm gonna put this pattern away. This is a size six pattern. It goes from three, four, five, and six. So I'm using the six. And that's the Simplicity 4388. If you are interested. I don't know how old it is actually. It should say on here. Usually it does. 2005, so maybe eBay. But usually they make them so that there is four pieces. So this is different because there's just two pieces, which is kind of less complicated in my opinion. So the first thing you're going to do is take your pant legs and you're just gonna line up the inseams, which is super easy. And then we're just gonna pin that. Hello to anyone who is joining. We're just doing a little bit of sewing up some simple pajama pants. Such a great gift. If you wanted to make holiday jammies, usually people get on top of that kind of stuff early on. So when you wanna go and find the good holiday fabric. It's usually scarce by now. But I was lucky enough to get some cute prints on sale during Black Friday. So this this one was five dollars for a meter so five bucks for pajama pants this isn't too bad I think. All right. So now we're just going to sew up the inseam and I'm going to grab my serger. Hopefully I don't have to. I might need to move my camera. Yes, I'm going to do this. Okay, I'm going to move you guys. But I want you to be able to see. Okay. Hopefully that's good. This is my serger. I don't have it out all the time because I don't, my sewing room isn't quite set up yet. I just got it back from my husband who was taking over it. Um, so I'm hoping that I can have it in a spot that's permanent. And then I don't have to pull it out every time. This is a Brother 655D. All right. Okay, it doesn't make any noise when you turn it on. <laughs> really fun using a serger so if you haven't used a serger before um, definitely a fun little machine so I'm just gonna do that side seam and if you didn't cut 
your seam perfectly, then this machine will just trim off any of the you know, uneven parts. So I'm just gonna put it in and line it up. Just line up the edge with the line that is on your machine. So I don't usually cut off too much. And since I did adjust my pattern a little bit, then um, there's not gonna be much excess. And you keep going and then you run it right off the machine because you want to keep those chains locked and then that's how the first pant leg goes so easy okay now I'll do the next one so if you don't have a serger you can just do a leg stitch so that is completely fine I've done that for many years it took me a long time to get my serger From here actually yeah okay so yeah not much kind comes off a little knife in there is just gonna trim off your fabric which is pretty neat make sure we took all my needles out or pins so I don't stab myself okay so now you're going to take one of your legs and you're going to flip it right sides out and we're going to insert it into the one that is inside out it's a pretty neat little trick if you've never seen how pants are made so you put that in there and then you're going to keep the seams of your pant legs together and then we'll go to the crotch area and get those two seams and we will put those together, lining them up as best you can. And then you go up the one side for some reason I like to use pins when I'm using, when I'm making clothes and then clips for everything else. So it's like we're going up the, the bum area to the waistband, and then you go up the front of the pants to the front seam, up to the waistband. Hopefully you can see that good. It is getting cold around here these days, so my kids appreciate the warmth. Okay, so now we're just gonna do another surge along that. this machine it just sews like butter Okay, 
So after this, um, the pants are formed. So you can go ahead and take your leg out. And as you can see, So what's neat about these pants is that they have literally no side seam. So now I'm just going to do a quick surge around the top of the waistband and then around the ankles just to prevent any sort of fraying and because surging is just so fun. So if you can do any extra surging, then why not? <laughs> and there's this little thingy here that I can take out and that's perfect for pant legs so you just slip that over and then raise up your foot and then go Good morning. Um, this is just the box setting, so it's like four and a half, four, four, and then six. So I don't really know the correct settings or how to set it. It's just what it was when it came out of the box. <laughs> I wanted to make a pair of this and then I got some Peppa Pig fabric but then when I got it to my house it was actually a canvas I didn't even realize so I can't make those. I'm gonna have to figure something out maybe a little purse or something. done with the serger for now and then I'm going to move over to the regular sewing machine when I do the hems. literally how we're 18 minutes in and we already have pants look at how cute they are already oh I didn't tuck one of my little seams But as you can see, the top is very long. So we're gonna fold that down, I think, two inches. So one and then two, and that's gonna be the casing for our elastic. Um, this is actually suspender elastic. So I just cut up a suspender, um, a cheap one that I found, and it's really good, nice stretchy elastic. So I'm gonna use that. Normally I would use a fold over elastic. Um, not a fold over elastic. It's a um, non-folding elastic. 
um, just so that it has some strength to it. And then it, over time it won't end up folding. So um, if you are doing waistbands, make sure it's a, what the heck is it called? I don't know the exact name, but it looks different than your regular elastic. I don't know where some is. I'm still organizing this whole room. I just moved back in because I was upstairs in my house. So I'm probably going to have to go to Ikea one day and then get some more organization. But Ikea right now is very, there's not much there. So, so because I surged the edges, which you can also zigzag, um, if you wanted to just fold it up once and then do a, uh, a zigzag over the raw edge. Or you can fold it up once to, and then fold it up again to hide the seam. So it depends on how much length you need. If you're running out of length, then you can just do one fold up. Which I think I might just do that. Because I searched the edges, I can do that. But if you don't, then I would fold up once a quarter of an inch and then fold up again a half an inch. But this little boy that's getting it is a little bit taller than Jack. Jack just doesn't want to seem to grow. So I have a feeling he'll need some more of that length. So I'm going to try to keep as much length in these pants as possible. And then they'll just last longer because you know how boys are. They just, they just don't, even like girls too, their, their legs grow, but their waist kind of stays the same. So they can wear short forever, but pants, they start to get short on them. Okay. So with the waist, I fold it down once about an inch. And then I'll fold it down again. You don't have to fold it down a whole inch the first time, but I do have quite a bit of room down to that crotch area, so that's okay. And it just helps give that waistband more structure. Hello, everybody. You are welcome to chat if you'd like to. Missy. I don't know what the exact measurement for a boy is, but I'm sure that is, I'm sure it is enough. You just want it to be big enough so that your elastic will fit in. There's enough room to be able to do that. I'm getting worried. Like, is it enough? <laughs> is it too much? I think that's good. Okay, so now I'm going to get the regular sewing machine. If you had, uh, what's it called? Cover stitch? Cover stitch? That is what um, they, the stores use for like, you know, regular retail garments, do hems and stuff. So it's other, other words for it are a hemming machine. I would love to have that, but it's just such a, like it only does one thing. It only really hems. So it's hard to justify getting one of those but maybe one day I do have my polystar um polystar from sulky thread in my machine still so maybe I mean there is some red in it so maybe I'll just leave it in there it's sparkly which is <laughs> perfect for 
holiday jammies. I don't know. It's, it, like, you won't notice. All right. Okay. So hopefully you guys can see. Oop. Knocking my little setup here. And then the same thing with these types of machines. You can take off this guy when you do smaller hems like this. Okay. So I am going to be using a zigzag stitch just There isn't really much stretch, I guess. This does not have much stress in it. <laughs> stretch in it. Um, actually, no. We'll just use a regular stitch. Okay. But you can use a zigzag if you want to. If you have some good stretch this way, which I don't seem to have any, which I'm surprised, um, then you're going to want to use a zigzag just so that that doesn't break your threads because using a stitch like I am now, if you were to stretch it, it just snaps your threads. So long since I've done a live, but that's just because, like I said, I had no sewing room. So I do plan on doing more. Hopefully, 2021 is the year for us. Okay, we need to get. You know, it kind of just it ruined a lot of plans. Let's say the channel suffered. My children's education has suffered. I'm just hoping for better things in the new year. And I think probably everyone is just in the same mindset. Okay. Now we'll do the top. So I'm going to look for the bum area, which is on this side. And I'm going to start, start my seam starting from there because I'm going to be leaving a little gap there to insert the elastic. Am I like super fuzzy? Hopefully that's better. Um, so we're going to leave like a one inch hole and that'll be for inserting. there we'll just stop and because there's going to be some back stitching here and you're going to see it that's why I'd rather have it on the back just so you can't see it and if you wanted to make these into drawstring pants this is when you would insert that but we're going to do the elastic for the little guys just so it's easier and I have this device which I'm going to use got a little eye hole in it so hopefully this will work we'll see if not um, I might use my bodkin as they call it I was calling it a bobkin and people were like it's a bodkin I was like oh sorry <laughs> yes I did I definitely wash any of my fleece fleece is the one that you know will just shrink right up on you. I think we're going to use a bobkin because that's not going to fit. Okay. 
So just when you're going through, just be careful because you might lose the end. So when you get there, you might want to put a safety pin in there. You'll see when I get there. And we're going to try not to twist the elastic as we're inserting. Now maybe one day I'll make the matching shirt. There's even a robe in this pattern. The shirt seems somewhat simple. We'll see. I'm not uh, super brave yet <laughs> with the garment making. Oh no! Oh no! I lost it. See, this is... That's why I don't necessarily love this device. Maybe I can reattach it. I don't think so. <laughs> In every live stream, something must go wrong. And this part really hurts my hands. So I just want to get it over with. <laughs> oh, okay. I um, I'm going for a, a test called an ENG hopefully soon. I'm still waiting for them to call me for the appointment. Um, and that test is, I guess, they're going to shoot electrodes down into my wrist. And, uh, yeah, so this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to attach the safety pin onto it and then I'll just use this thing. So this is cool because you use this as your little threader. And it goes all the way through and it's flexible. Um, and then hopefully, yeah, hopefully they will diagnose me and then something can be done. About this carpal tunnel stuff because it is not fun hello from Brazil oh man I wish I was there it's so cold here <laughs> it is freezing temperatures now so winter is upon us up here in Canada Kind of sucks, but can't really do much about it. <laughs> My son and daughter are like, "Can I wear shoes today?" And I'm and, and I'm like, "No." And they're like, "Why?" And I'm like, "Because it's winter." <laughs> oh, <laughs> but there's no snow. Like, it doesn't matter. You still need to wear the boots because the the air is cold. Oh. <laughs> okay, so this is the part where you got to be careful because you don't want to lose the other end. Because sometimes you'll do it and you'll keep pulling the, the one end and then it'll just spring back and the whole thing will just, the end will get hidden. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to take the two ends and I'll put the safety pin on both ends. And then we can pull like that. And uh, there. Carefully. Don't want to lose it. But now I'm going to sew the two ends together and I like to overlap it like that just so that um, you know if you have it like this then you're gonna have these two ends that are kind of just being annoying in the waistband it's gonna make it bulky 
so I'll just do quick stitch. And then I'll do a zigzag for it. Super secure. And then slip that all the way in. Hopefully that's enough. It is 21 inches. Make it a little shorter. Okay, that's good. So then we're just going to close it up. Um, I'm going to find some ribbon. And that'll be for my little label. So instead of going and spending a lot of money, especially if you're just making it for yourself, I will get a piece of ribbon, sorry about the shake, and use that as the little tag because if not, they're not going to know how to put them on properly. And Like I can tell how to put pants on properly without a tag, but kids don't, can't really figure that out. So now I'm just going to sew up that hole. And then put on like a one inch piece. And by doing that, it also kind of, I'm doing it over top of the elastic and it just kind of holds that into place so it doesn't move around. And uh, yeah. So I'm just going to put that right there. peasy. The one thing on my, about my machine, it just makes a complete mess with my threads. And I, I imagine it's because, sorry, um, my machine is just, it is a beginner machine, so I don't have anything super fancy. But it's just drives me nuts. Maybe one day I'll get a better machine. I mean, it, it serves me well, I'm not going to lie, but it just thumbs up. I think it's the bottom thread. Oh, 
Look at that. Literally ran out just now. I should go buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> All right. Oh, what did I drop? Uh oh. That's not good. That's the second time in two days. Okay, now I'm gonna fold, uh, un. What is it called? Flip them right side out. So there they are. How cute. Oh my goodness. I'm getting so much better. You know, it only takes making, you know, a dozen pairs of pants before you actually are happy with your product. I've been making pants since high school. Um, so finally, I'm happy. But it really does come down to the serger. Serger really makes a big difference. So I hope you enjoyed making some pants with me um, if you did give me a thumbs up I see someone gave me a thumbs down and thank you so much I appreciate that because uh, thumbs downs are actually just the same to the YouTube algorithm as a thumbs up so I appreciate everybody who has engaged with my video and um, yeah so I'm gonna hop off here and keep making things because I'll probably be at this for the rest of the day. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys! Oh, where am I going? I'm going over here. Okay, bye guys. <laughs>